In January, Ghost, a young male barn owl, took up residence in a sycamore stump. He's looking comfortable here, but he still needs a mate. So when Willow arrives, a young female barn owl, it seems to be a perfect match. But just as their romance begins to blossom, they get some unwanted attention. A male kestrel arrives and swipes at Ghost. The kestrel pair, known as Mr. and Mrs. Kez, are really keen to take this spot for themselves. And after a couple of weeks of intimidation, Ghost concedes the nest. So Ghost needs to find a new place and the nearby Barn Owl Tower could be a good option. Ghost heads into the nest box to check it out. After a look around, Ghost thinks this could be just the spot, but he's still got to convince Willow. By night, he returns to the tower and begins to call for her. But there's no reply. It's his first time courting and he's not sure if he's getting this right. He calls again. And this time he gets a response. He heads into the nest box hoping to entice Willow inside. Spurred on by her reply, he calls even louder. Soon Willow arrives to see what all the fuss is about. She's curious, but seems a little bit nervous as she heads inside. Ghost rushes towards her, screeching loudly. He charges again, grasping a beak, an early part of the courtship process. Willow joins in, but soon she's had enough for one night. She makes her exit. Ghost, meanwhile, seems satisfied with his progress so far. Over the next month, the two owls get closer and closer. Ghost continues with nest maintenance. And Willow visits most nights. The pair show telltale signs of courtship, clasping each other's beaks, alapreening, and spending more and more time together. But after three months, they just don't seem ready to mate. As much as Willow seems to like Ghost, she's just not convinced by his choice of nest site. She seems to have her heart set on Sycamore Stump, so she heads over to take another look. But now the nest is occupied. Willow has stumbled upon the female kestrel who vigorously defends her eggs and her two tiny chicks. After the scuffle, Willow retreats, but she's not giving up without a fight. 20 minutes later, she returns to the kestrel's nest. But the kestrel's got a young family to protect and she would fight to the death if needed. Finally, Willow gives in. Defeated, she heads over to the feeding post to cool off, only to be hit by a passing barn owl. Barn owl tower seems to be the best option for this pair, but Willow doesn't seem to be that sure. So while they're out, I'm heading up with some tools to make some home improvements.
I'm making the box a bit smaller with a really obvious place to nest. She doesn't seem to like the large chippings in the nest box, so I'm swapping them out with some finer ones. So that's all done now and I really hope they like what I've done with the place. The next night Willow is back at the tower. She heads inside to check out my handiwork. Willow and Ghost seem to like the updated nest. And finally the attempt to mate. It's obvious it's their first time. But they soon get the hang of it. It's so exciting to see this young relationship blossom. And it's amazing to get an insight into their courtship. Things seem to be going so well and I can't wait to see if they lay eggs soon. Ghost, the male barn owl, arrives with a mouse and calls Willow into the nest box. He offers her a mouse to prove he can provide for her. This young pair are new to mating and their attempts are not always successful. Ghost thinks this is the perfect spot, but I'm not sure Willow's convinced about Barn Owl Tower. I think she has a heart set on Sycamore Stump, which is currently full of kestrel chicks. At this rate, I'm wondering if Willow and Ghost will end up with a brood at all this year. But by mid-June the final kestrel chick fledges and Sycamore is empty for the first time in nearly two months. I'm thinking this could be their chance. That very same day Willow goes to scope the place. And Ghost is happy to follow her lead. They seem to like being back in this nest, but it doesn't come without its challenges. Mrs. Kez still thinks of Sycamore as her own, so she's given the barn owls a tough time. And there's more competition. A different barn owl is trying to enter the nest. It's Finn, the male barn owl from down the valley. He's looking for a place to have his second brood. But Willow and Ghost soon see him off. For just over a month, this pair have looked settled in sycamore stump. Even nest scraping regularly. This is where they dig a shallow depression to accommodate their clutch. But there are still no eggs. In mid-July, the indecisive Willow leaves sycamore to Ghost's disbelief. As night falls, she returns to Barn Owl Tower. Ghost follows her again, calling. He makes her to prove he's happy with her choice. and they spend the next 10 days here. Then, to my surprise, at the end of July, Willow enters Sycamore with purpose.
and later that day, she lays her first egg. Her choice has been made, but I think she's forgot to tell Ghost. He's back at Barn Isle Tower, blissfully unaware that Willow is laid. Ghost can't understand where she is. After waiting for an hour, he heads out to find her. He hears her at Sycamore, but he's completely unaware that she's sitting on their very first egg. She keeps trying to tell him about the egg, but he just isn't getting the message. That night, Willow relentlessly calls for Ghost. He can't understand why she keeps calling him, and he makes her several times. Eventually, he sits outside the nest, ignoring her completely. Six hours after it was laid, he delivers some food and finally notices that egg. I don't think he can quite believe it. The next day, Willow leaves briefly to stretch her wings. It's a great opportunity for me to see the egg before she returns to incubate. Normally barn owls lay every three days, but it's five days before we see the second egg. That night while she's incubating, Finn is back and tries to enter the nest. Then he's back again for a second attempt. And then a third. Each time Willow sees him off and then returns to her eggs. Three days later, she lays a third egg. And while Willow's out, Ghost pops in and is amazed to see the three eggs. But Willow soon returns. Incubating the eggs is solely the role of the female barn owl. On the 7th of August, Willow lays a fourth and final egg. A complete clutch. She's set to incubate these eggs for just over a month, when hopefully new life will emerge. I'm so pleased they have finally chosen a nest site, even though it's almost taken them eight months. Most barn owl chicks are fledged by now, but this pair's work is just getting started. The eggs will take 32 days to hatch, and it's Willow's responsibility alone to keep those eggs warm. Only taking the briefest of breaks when she can. The role of a partner, Ghost, is to provide her with food. While she's tied up with incubating. It's his first brood too, and so far he's doing okay. The first egg starts to pip right on time, 31 days after it was laid. But Ghost hasn't brought in any food for her today. So Willow leaves the nest to find food for herself. 
It's not a good idea for her to leave her eggs unguarded at this stage. And in her absence, another barn owl enters the nest. It's Finn, I can tell by the ID ring on his foot. He and Gilfie are the dominant pair in the area and have a nest nearby with eggs in too. Luckily, this particular owl is not aggressively territorial. Willow can't quite believe it. I don't think she'll do this again, unless she has to. Especially as this egg's just about to hatch. Let's hope Ghost can pick up his game. The next morning, Willow reveals her first hatchling. This one's called Ginger. She's tiny and completely dependent on her parents. Willow needs to continue incubating all the remaining eggs and the new hatchling to keep them warm. Day and night. So she's relying on ghosts to keep her well fed. But when it comes to the nest empty handed, She makes it clear he needs to head back out. Thankfully he gets the message and returns with a mouse. So Willa can finally feed herself and her new chick. The next day Willow stands, revealing a second precious chick. This one's called Cinnamon. Ghost seems to be living up to his name, as I'm not seeing much of him. He only returns to the nest at night to deliver food. It could be to give Willow more space in the nest. But I think this arrangement just suits him. Three days later, I catch my first glimpse of the third chick, Clove. It's lovely to see all three chicks together. The next day, temperatures soar, and Willow leaves the nest to stretch her wings. When she returns, she's panting heavily. Lots of birds do this to cool themselves down when it's hot. They rapidly move parts of the neck to increase airflow. It's known as gular fluttering. This warm weather means the chicks don't need brooding as closely as usual. But Willow knows too much time on their own can be dangerous, as they can't regulate their own temperature yet so brings the chick back in before long. Thankfully the temperature cools off just in time to welcome the fourth and final chick. I think Willow's going to have her work cut out. Ginger is now 10 days old and is already preening herself. There's such a big size difference between them and this is common with owls. They grow so much in their first few days. And Ginger is already eating large prey items whole. They seem to be developing well under the watchful eye of Willow. Ghost bringing in just enough food. But he doesn't know that the prey is too large for the owlets to swallow. His role is just to provide food, he doesn't get involved any further. He 
Luckily Willow is on hand, tearing it into the right sized pieces, which is key while the chicks are still small. Now at 15 days old, Ginger stretches her wings for the first time. And Willow's there to see it. Cinnamon's eyes are now open too, which is great. But I catch a glimpse of the youngest barn owl. It looks worryingly small and weak. As the chicks grow, Ghost just isn't delivering enough food. And when he finally brings a mouse to Willow, the older chicks eat it all. There's never any left for the youngest. I've noticed over the years, barn owls just don't share out the food evenly. Unlike the kestrels, they always make sure every mouth is fed. When Willow leaves to stretch her wings, it's clear the youngest chick isn't developing like the rest of them. When Willow returns, she tries to feed the youngest chick. But Ginger steals the food again. And unfortunately, later that day, I noticed the chick has passed away. The ever resourceful Willow doesn't waste a meal and feeds it to the other chicks. It's really a case of survival of the fittest. Thankfully, the other three chicks are thriving. Their pin feathers are coming through. And at 23 days old, Ginger has already started head bobbing. Practicing spotting things in and around a nest. Although considerably smaller, Clove is looking healthy too. Her eyes are open and she's always huddled close to her siblings. She's now even eating a meal's whole. The chicks are growing quickly and now able to regulate their own temperature. But the nest is getting crowded. So Willow is spending more time in the entrance keeping guard. It's great to see the youngest chick stretching her wings, just like her older siblings. Over the next few days their bond is clear, always huddled together. Keeping warm and even sharing food. Now the chicks are well grown, Willow spends more of her time hunting. Which is good because Ghost just isn't pulling his weight. And over the next 10 days, Willow provides 84% of all food deliveries. Thankfully, she's a devoted mother. And I gave her a helping hand too. The oldest, Ginger, is now six weeks old. And she's just over a week older than the youngest chick, Clove. Their feathers are developing well, and they're even practicing flapping the wings. They're still covered in fluffy white down, but there's dark plumage emerging. I think they might all be female. Ginger is so inquisitive, spending a lot of her time watching the outside world. Mm -hmm. 
Soon Middle Chick Cinnamon comes to the entrance too. Clove isn't steady on her feet yet and she's not brave enough to join the others. Their mum Willow works hard, bringing in food for them around the clock. The chick's dad, Ghost, isn't providing much for them. So I lend a helping hand, dropping some food into the nest. Now all three chicks are developing well. Willow and Ghost chicks are now six weeks old, so this is a perfect time to do some ringing. The both parents are away, so I'm heading in to get the chicks out. I've got a license to monitor barn owl nest boxes, which covers handling the chicks too. So here we are. There's one of the chicks. Look at those long legs. Oh, that's another heavy little owl there. Look at that. When you see, you see these ones, Jane, they're absolutely stunning. Jean Thorpe runs a local wildlife rescue centre. She's licensed to ring the owls and I can help weigh and measure them. Right. Start off with the littley first. So this right. is the youngest chick. Real long legs, this one. Jean puts an identification ring on each owl. It doesn't harm them in any way and means they can be traced in the future. Yeah, so we ring them. So they're able to monitor the species and how it fares in the wild and how long they live and how far they travel. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we'll give this one away, shall we? As well as being fitted with a ring, the owls are weighed and measured to provide more information about how they develop. So she's 3.30, isn't she? She, yeah. She's weighing in at 3.30. Yeah. That's not a good weight for a little, little barn owl, is it? It is, yeah. Who's next? Right, so I think this is the oldest chick. Handling the owls gives me the chance to confirm my hunch that they're all females. If we look at the yeah. side on that one, all these sparkles, markings, yeah. look at that. Female? Yeah, so it's another the female thing. by the look of it. Yeah. I'm measuring the wing and it goes from the elbow joint to the end of the longest flight feather. So this, this bird is 222. Two, two. It will probably get a longer wing by the time it's finished fledging. Oh yeah. And if you look at the flight feathers here, look, and can you see that waxy sheath on the feathers? Well, the feather grows out of there, so this bird's feathers are still growing. In no time, all three chicks have their rings fitted. Time to go back, Rob? Yeah, let's get them back in. Absolutely superb though, look at them. Mega. So we just hope they do really well. Pop them back in. And they're all settled back into the nest before the parents return. Over the next week, the chicks seem to be growing even faster. With a high protein diet, development happens quickly with owls, especially in these final stages as they prepare to fledge. The chicks take time to preen their feathers to get rid of the fluffy down. And it's beautiful to watch as they preen each other too. All three chicks enjoy sitting in the entrance now, intrigued by the world outside. Eldest chick, Ginger, is nearly eight weeks old and she looks ready to go. Most of her down has gone now, revealing a beautifully marked adult feathers. As night falls, she pushes her way to the entrance, stretches her wings, and climbs to the top of the nest. She looks back at her sisters and loses her footing. She may have fledged, but she's new to all of this. Cinnamon and Clove watch on, fascinated. 
and in the morning they're still there. Willow arrives with a vole. They'll need plenty of food before they fledge too. That night, Ginger returns. And it's lovely to see them reunited. She may have flown the nest, but she'll be back here regularly until she's fully independent. Ginger spends the next day with her sisters before heading out again by night. And she even joins her mother on the feeding post. She's looking more and more confident, but she still has a playful side. A week later, Cinnamon and Clove are looking much more mature. Now the owls are taking a look outside, I'm going to head into the hide and see if I can get a glimpse. This is absolutely magic, watching these young barn owls preening the new feathers and they're just getting rid of the remaining down, ready for fledging. The other one's pushing through to get a look at the outside world. These owlets are about eight weeks old now and with feathers like these they're going to fledge any day. That night, it's Cinnamon's turn. She scrambles to the top of the nest, just like Ginger did. And soon she's joining her mum, Willow, and her sister on the feeding post. Now only Clove is left to take to the wing. And within a week, she takes the leap too. It's been fascinating to watch these young barn owls grow. With the brood so late in the year, I wasn't sure how they'd fare. But with a devoted mum like Willow, all three chicks are fledged. And it's fantastic to see them flying free. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to see more. Here's a taste of what you'll enjoy seeing on this channel.